let us discuss about sum of consecutive numbers today. Now, let us take three consecutive numbers, say 4, 5 and 6. What is the sum going to be? When you add them, their sum is 15 and see this is divisible by 3. If we take 17, 18 and 19 and we add them, so we will get their sum to be 54 and this is also divisible by 3. In general, we can take three consecutive numbers to be x, x plus 1 and x plus 2 and the sum is 3x plus 3 which is divisible by 3. But a better way of taking three consecutive numbers is x minus 1, <coughs> x and x plus 1 and when you add them, their sum is 3x which is always divisible by 3. So, in a way we have a middle number, one number on either side. If we are taking five consecutive numbers, so 5 minus 1 is 4 and that divided by 2. So, we will take the middle number to be x and two numbers on either side of it and one before it. So, 5 consecutive numbers we can take x minus 2, x minus 1, x, x plus 1 and x minus 2 and x plus 2 sorry and what is the sum going to be? 5x. So, you can see easily that this is divisible by 5. When you take these consecutive numbers in this form and you add them the sum is nothing but 5 times the middle number. 7 consecutive numbers when you take it is x will be in the middle 3 numbers on either side. So, x minus 3, x minus 2, x minus 1, x, x plus 1, x plus 2 and x plus 3 and the sum is going to be 7x. So, what are you getting in general? When you take k to be odd that means the number of numbers is odd, so you, their sum will always be divisible by k, sum of k consecutive numbers. When k is odd is always divisible by k. Is not this a beautiful result? Now, let us take k to be even. So, if k is even that means two consecutive numbers, two consecutive numbers we take x and x plus 1. So, when you add them their sum is going to be 2x plus 1 and this you can see is odd. That means the sum of two consecutive numbers will not be divisible by 2, there will be a remainder which is 1. So, when you divide two consecutive numbers by 2, the remainder will be 1. Now, you take four consecutive numbers. So, you know just like we took here three consecutive numbers to be x minus 1, x, x plus 1, we can add another number, we can take it to be in the form x minus 1, x, x plus 1 and x plus 2. Because when you add it, you can see that their sum is 4x plus 2 and you can easily see that this is not divisible by 4. In fact, when we divide the sum of 4 consecutive numbers by 4, the remainder is 2. Now, what about 6 consecutive numbers? Let us just see. We will take it again to be of the form just as we did here. 5 you add another number to it. So, x minus 2, x minus 1, x, x plus 1, x plus 2 and the 6 number is x plus 3 and when you add them their sum is 6x plus 3 and when you divide this number by 6, again it is not divisible by 6, the remainder is 3. 
on dividing the sum of six consecutive numbers by three. If you observe, half of two is one, half of four is two, half of six is three. So you are getting a pattern that if you divide when k is even, sum of k consecutive numbers is we can say not divisible by k. In fact, we get the remainder to be k by 2 and you can see that <coughs> k is even so k by 2 is going to be a <coughs> number it will not be in fractions. So sum of we have got two beautiful results sum of k consecutive numbers is always divisible by k when k is odd. But when k is even, sum of k consecutive numbers is not divisible by k and we can predict the remainder. You see, we have just got the generalized version, how we just took values of k, 2, 4, 6 and we got this result. This is how we derive results actually. This is how research is done. When you see a pattern and then you check whether it is always uh, true in general or not. So, this is what we can say about sum of k consecutive numbers whether k is odd or it is even and in another video we will talk about what happens to the product of k consecutive numbers.